the United States and the Republic of Korea standing shoulder to shoulder. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis assuring its ally that the Trump administration will help defend South Korea from DPRK threats. America's commitments to defending our allies and to upholding our extended deterrence guarantees remain ironclad. Any attack on the United States or on our allies will be defeated and any use of nuclear weapons would be met with a response that would be effective and overwhelming. U.S. President Donald Trump rattled officials here when he threatened during the election season to pull U.S. troops from the region if South Korea and Japan don't pay their fair share of the cost. But Secretary Mattis is downplaying the president's past comments, instead promising the U.S. remains committed to honoring its traditional alliances. The secretary's visit comes amid high tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The DPRK says it can launch a long-range intercontinental ballistic missile able to reach the United States at any time. And reports say Pyongyang has restarted its plutonium reactor at its main nuclear facility. Meanwhile, controversy looms over a plan to deploy the U.S. THAAD anti-missile defense system in South Korea later this year. Experts say that plan is unlikely to change under President Trump's leadership. The deployment of THAAD in South Korea is just one piece of the U.S.'s 21st century long-term global missile defense system. So in this type of environment, the U.S. could play the DPRK sanctions card to simultaneously try and ease tensions with Pyongyang and strategically keep Beijing in check. Secretary Mattis now travels to Tokyo to meet with Japanese leaders. And as he continues his maiden voyage as Pentagon chief, the U.S.'s foreign policy in the region over the next four years becomes a bit clearer. Shane Hom, CGTN, Seoul.